Welcome. The subject of this video is how to use power MOSFET transistors with microcontrollers such as Arduino and PIC and so forth. I'm your host Louis Laughlin. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com for all kinds of electronics ideas and to learn a lot of interesting things. Let's get started. Here we have four schematic symbols for power MOSFETs. They really are two broad categories, Q1 and Q Q2. Q1 and Q2 are enhancement mode MOSFETs. Q3 and Q4 are depletion mode MOSFETs. Uh, we will get to the difference in the two momentarily, but let's notice the schematic symbols. Up here in Q1 and Q2, which are enhancement mode, you notice this is a broken line here and here. Now the arrows point are simply specify whether it's an in channel, as in here, or a p channel. The arrow the arrow points to the in type material, like it does in every other transistor. Moving down here, you notice the bar is solid. These are depletion mode transistors. Um, let's now get to an explanation of what's the difference. First, let's look at depletion mode MOSFETs. Again, here are their symbols. You notice the solid bar. The, the idea with a depletion mode is that when you power it up, they're always turned on. You have to turn them off. The, yep, that's that may sound strange. You you don't turn them on. You turn them off. When they say in channel, for instance, and this is an in channel representation, you notice there's a source connection to this side of the uh, green material and a drain connected to this side of the in material. The material that's green is in doped semiconductor. And you notice that there is a why they call it a channel is you've got a pathway for current to move from source to drain or drain to source depending on the polarity of the MOSFET. Notice here we the blue is an insulated layer. What you do to cut this off is you apply a voltage between the source and the gate and it will close the channel. Largely it will turn the n-type material in the channel to p-type material which forms uh, largely a reversed biased diode shutting off the device. Again, applying gate action to the MOSFET shuts it off. That's the um, properties of a depletion mode MOSFET. Notice one other thing too. You notice we have a a gate terminal here, but we have this insulated layer of silicon dioxide. Note that between the end material which is connected to the source and the gate, this forms a weak capacitor, which is why we have to connect a uh, gate discharge resistor, usually a high value 10 or 20k or something like that between source and gate. If you didn't do that, for instance, and you happen to tur turn it off, um, you may not turn it, be able to turn it back on unless you discharge that electric charge. Now we have a layout of an enhancement mode MOSFET. Oh, drop back. Um, what you see here is an N channel, a P channel would simply have the opposite doped semiconductor. You would have a p-channel here and would apply a positive voltage as opposed to an n-channel and apply a negative voltage. Now an enhancement mode MOSFET means that when you have the when you have the gate action will turn it on. With nothing applied to the gate you notice you have a n-type silicon here n-type silicon there, but it's a substrate which is p-type silicon here. 
there is no path for the current. When I apply a positive charge to this gate, for instance, with this in channel, I'm going to attract electrons from the uh, substrate, which is going to combine here and form a channel of n type material all the way across. Very simply, I create a pathway for current to move from source to gate, uh, uh, depending on the polarity. Now, this is an N channel. A P channel works just the same, except all the semiconductor materials has the opposite polarity, and I'm creating a positive channel and not a negative channel. Again, notice your schematic symbols. The bar here is broken, specifying that it is a depletion mode. The rest of this, I'm going to look at depletion mode only. To be blunt with you, I have never seen... Oh, excuse me, we're going to work only on enhancement mode. I have never seen a depletion mode MOSFET. Never handled one, never seen one. They are, frankly, it seems pretty rare. So for the rest of this video, we're going to be looking at enhancement mode, where we apply a voltage and cut the MOSFET on. Again, I must iterate that here's your conductive material through here, and here is your gate terminal, and here is an insulated layer. They form a weak capacitor, which must be discharged when it's turned off, so you have to connect the resistor between gate and source. Looking uh, momentarily at the properties of a common microcontroller like Arduino, we have a negative common and a positive 5 volt VCC. What that simply means is the transistors, how we hook them up, doesn't matter if they're MOSFET or bipolar, you have to take that negative common into consideration. And the I.O. pins on the Arduino only put out a maximum of 20 milliamps. Also note that if I connect anything with a voltage greater than 5 directly to this pin, I'm going to damage the Arduino. So everything with the Arduino evolves around 5 volts and a negative common. All right, we have t we have the IRF 630 and the R IRF 9630. They're pictured here. The IRF 630 is an in-channel um, enhancement mode MOSFET, while the IRF 9630 is a P-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. Uh, your case is off to the side. If they both have the same case. And they both have drain, gate, drain, and source at the same physical locations on the uh, case. And note that the heat sink flange is also the drain. The reason I chose this, these two particular MOSFETs is I use them in a lot of my projects. Um, they, have, they carry plenty of current and, are, and have a fairly high voltage at 200 volts. Now, you'll notice there's a thing here called VGS. That's voltage gate source. That is the voltages you will place from, a gate, from the gate to the source uh, to switch the MOSFET on. A and they are opposite electrical polarity. So I would connect the gate here. If, if we're looking at a negative ground system, the gate would be positive 5 to 10 volts on the end channel, but we could not really, we would have to use a positive ground system with a P channel, and I would have to connect uh, negative 5 to 10 volts to the gate. You can use a P channel with an Arduino and a negative ground, and I'll show you how to do it. And the deal is that the voltage between the gate and source cannot be greater than 20 volts. If I was to connect 30 volts between gate and source, I would punch through the insulator and destroy the device. 
once again you still have to connect a gate discharge resistor between the gate and the source. All right, here is our basic circuit for the uh, in-channel uh, MOSFET, the IRF 630. Here is its symbol again. Notice there's something I didn't mention before. You notice there's a built-in parasitic diode. This uh, is used for switching and it's used and you can switch magnetic loads with it. This will suppress the noise spikes and so forth. Let me emphasize we are operating here as switches. This is not audio amplifiers and you can't really use these with an audio amplifier. Looking over here at the schematic and I need to uh, note that this is a voltage operated device. I place 5 volts at the gate it conducts but there is no current flow between the source and the gate this is not like bipolar transistors here again is RG that is your uh, gate discharge resistor I usually use about 10 K not a lot to this you don't need a dropping you don't need a uh, gate dropping resistor for voltage like you did with a transistor. Transistors or bipolar transistors are current operated. This device is voltage operated. And apply 5 volts, it conducts and you complete and it's like pushing a switch from drain to source it cuts on and your LED or whatever the load is will light up. Now here we go with the P-channel um, enhancement mode MOSFET. Remember I told you you really could not connect it, the source of that, to a negative ground. It won't work. But you can do this. You can flip it around the source of the uh, P-channel MOSFET must go to the positive side of the supply. That's VCC. And your drain can go towards ground. That's fine. The difference is the bleeder resistor will go up here to VCC. And with, and with this transistor down here non-conductive or open, I will have 12 volts here on the gate. As long as I have 12 volts on the gate and 12 volts on the source, it will remain turned off. Now I had to use a NPN transistor down here because I could not let that 12 volts on the uh, MOSFET gate go to the Arduino. I would damage it. But all this is is simply a um, NPN bipolar transistor switch. I apply 5 volts here. This turns on. I get a current flow. The voltage at the gate goes to about a half a volt and then it turns on now that well I said before well I have to have a negative voltage to turn on the um, p-channel power MOSFET well it has to be negative with respect to the source so if the source is 12 volts and this is 0 volts and you play and you was to measure between them I got a difference of 12 volts that is the gate is less positive than the source. This is the only way realistically you can use a p-channel power MOSFET with a negative ground system like Arduino. Okay at this point somebody's going to ask well why couldn't we just use this circuit? This is a lot simpler looking. I didn't need the other transistor or so forth but you will be using these p-channel MOSFETs when we get to H bridges in another video. Here is a basic diagram of an H bridge motor control. Here is the p-channel circuit that I was just telling you about connected in series with the in-channel circuit that we looked at earlier and I have four of them. Okay, I, I will go deeply into my uh, these uh, motor con these H bridge motor controls in another video. 
suffice to say I need this and I need this to make it work. Another little thing to look at, and you should have seen this in my Arduino battery charge controller, is I'm using a MOSFET as a high-end switch. All that is, is a redrawing of this. It's the same thing, I just redrew it. This is to make, uh, again, it's the exact same circuit. What I wanted to show you was this Zener diode here, D1. Remember I warned you that the VGS of this MOSFET was 20 volts. Do you think I can hook it to 24 volts and not damage it? No, I can't. But what I do is connect the Zener diode cathode towards the gate in series with the uh, transistor switch collector down here. So when I switch the transistor on, the, t the Zener diode holds this gate at 10.5 volts, and while this up here is 24 volts, that's a difference of about, what, 14 volts? That's well within the 20 um, VGS, and it won't damage the transistor. So that's how I keep from damaging a high-end switch if I'm switching a higher voltage. If I happen to be using 48 volts, for instance, then I'm going to need at least a 35 or 40 volt Zener, or else I'll damage the uh, MOSFET, unless you can find a MOSFET with a higher BGS. Over here, if you're, uh, if you're under 20 volts for VCC, you don't need the Zener. It's a direct connection. And that completes this uh, tutorial on power MOSFET transistors. Um, check the other videos out for basic tra bipolar transistors. And we will be looking at H-Bridge motor controls and how to construct them. Thanks for listening.